All right, what's going on? Happy Tuesday night to you and yours. We're live, and we're giving you a double dose of Delco tonight. We got a Delco. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we have a. I, I don't think he calls Delco his home anymore, but always uh, in his I heart. Mean, Delco's he's Delco is always home. Come on, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's welcome to the show the one and only Sebastian Labar. And I am so freaking excited to talk to you. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Should be a fun time yeah, here. Dude, <laughs> <laughs> dude there's, there's like so much to talk about. You've had, uh, you know. An interesting life, so to say. Um, your, your your dad, the world famous uh, beyond Delco legend, he, he's a worldwide right. legend. Yeah. The one, Jeff Labar. Um, I, I have some stories that I, I had to tell you. And this one, especially, I think you're you're going to get a kick about. Um, back in '86, Night Songs was out. It was out. I was uh, I was okay. 16. I grew up in Upper Darby, a few blocks right off 69th Street. And from the time I was like five years old, like across the alley from me, every summer for like a month and then Christmas time, um, the, the, the grandparents of these, this family from Canada, they would come down and spend time with them. And I became very close with the, the grandson. We became like we became like pen pals throughout the year, and he would come down, and we were like brothers, and I, I made him a Delco person as we grew up together. So <laughs> come time 19, you know, like around 84, 85, he was starting to get into the, the metal and hard rock scene like I was. Come 86, he comes to visit for the summer, and it was right when um, Cinderella was getting ready to do their last Empire show, all ages show. Okay. We got to go to it. So he comes down. He's like, hey, man, all right, I already looked in the phone book. Jeff Labar, I have his phone number. I'm like, <laughs> so now I'm like, okay. I looked in the phone book. Oh, my God. The phone, that, that, that's, yeah, the phone book. I said, okay. He's like, call him up. I said, what? He's like, call Jeff. I'm like, and say what? He's like, tell him you want to come over and hang out with him. I'm like, wait a minute. I said, you want me to call Jeff Labar, who I, I don't know at all, and say, hey, Jeff, I, I, I'm a fan, and I want to come over and hang out with you and talk music. He's like, yes. I said, do you realize people like go to jail for this stuff? He's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> his, his number's in the phone book, eh? We'll be all right. I'm like, this is crazy. Next thing I know, I'm calling your dad. And he answers. And I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, oh my <laughs> right. God. <laughs> so I'm like, hey Jeff, what's up? Uh, I'm a fan of yours, and I'm really excited about the album and everything. I was wondering, can me and my friend come over and hang out and talk music and Cinderella with you? He's like, and he was real cool about. It. He's like, hey, you know, thanks, thanks a lot. He's like, but I'm a little busy right now. Maybe another time. He's like, you know, give me a call another time. I'm like, okay. I was like, wow. This goes on now every day oh, for like the next yeah. three four days because mr canada over there is up my ass is hollering at me every day he's like before i go back to canada you gotta call him we oh gotta my go god over there. so finally after three four days i'm like so, so jeff you think we can come over and hang out and talk finally he's like who the fuck are you i don't know you <laughs> he's like you're not coming to my house <laughs> i'm like Thank god somebody finally said it <laughs> <laughs> who are you that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, like I, I, I'm just like I, I'm calling this guy who, who's about to become like uh, Joe Rockstar, and, 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 and yeah, like some idiot kid calling him. Can I come over and hang out with you? <laughs> like <laughs> crazy, crazy, Man, crazy. That's a great story, though. Your friend has some balls. <laughs> the, the crazier balls is a few years later he ended up moving to uh, to California. To try a. Uh, you know, to, to do music and all. And he ended up, him and my old drummer, they went together and they moved in. I don't even know how this happened, but they moved in with Stevie Rochelle from Tough. Oh, they became cool. his, they became his roommates. I don't know how, but they lived there with him for a couple of years. I, yeah, I don't know. But he, yeah. That's very pretty ballsy. crazy. Damn, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. And, and, and another quick story that just, just uh, this isn't even like funny. It just, it was mind blowing to me. Um, 
it's probably like 15 years ago when my band, uh, the Dead Gerber Babies, were playing around. We played um, an Irish bar in Upper Darby. And two of the guys in the band actually went to school with your dad. So he came out. And they were actually, at the time, screwing around doing like a Sabbath tribute they were trying to put together, they were going to do. And okay. he came to see us play. And I'll never forget being on stage and looking. And your dad was like so into it. I'm like, holy fuck. I saw this guy on stage like 20-something times. And now he's staring at my stupid ass to go rock it out. It was so weird. <laughs> Hey, he always did that. He was always just like, oh, yeah, this fucking song rules, you know, and he'd like run up and like rock out up against the gate, you know, but he did that all the time. <laughs> That's so crazy, man. All right. So I'm going to because I don't know, like, about your younger days and all that. Like, at like, what point do you remember, like, realizing, like, oh, like, my dad's like a little special. Like, he's he, he he's a little more than dad. Uh I mean, I kind of, I guess I always knew that, like, you know, my dad was a musician and the band was really famous. And, you know, that's why I got to ride on a tour bus. And, you know, like, I kind of just pieced it together as I got older. Um, but, yeah, I just, like, I, I guess I wasn't around for the 80s to really know the heights. Right. I just kind of, like, always heard about it because yeah. I didn't really, I wasn't born until 92. Um, okay. So I saw most of, like, the, the, the 2000s like when they were touring with poison a lot um and and things and even then they were still packing like arenas yeah you know? it was still crazy shows but yeah, it was just something i grew up with man at what point did you like start like catching the bug like yeah i, I want to like pick up a guitar i want to start tinkering uh, I, I don't know i was always kind of like there was always guitars around and dad always kind of pushed it. Not like in a yeah, bad way, like a supportive way. Yeah. Um, sure. But uh, yeah, he always pushed it and he was like, Hey, if you want to play guitar, like I can, you know, get, just get you on. Or, or, um, at first I remember I, when he got me like my first guitar, I said I wanted to play it left-handed because I had played sports like left and right-handed. Like I was okay. ambidextrous. Um, so I didn't really know like what I wanted to, like how I wanted to play it. But he told me, he was like, well, you don't know how to play yet. So if you just learn how to play it right-handed, I can get you free guitars eventually. So I was like, <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah, I guess I'll learn how to play right-handed. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I was probably like, he, he had had uh, actually this little thing right here, this little, uh, that little red flying V was my first guitar. Wow. It's a half scale Epiphone red flying V. And then um, I had a three quarter scale after that. I'd say I, I started around eight years old. That's when I just kind of like say like a rough estimate, but. Do, did you like, um, Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe I'm crazy. Did you go to like School of Rock eventually? Um, I did for um, – I think I started when I was like 15 um, until I was 18, obviously. And then I started uh, teaching there for a little while. And that's actually okay. how I got into uh, Mach 22. Right. Okay. Um, that's what I thought. Because we were all teachers there. Okay. So like at that point when you were 15, like how far along were you? That you felt like or is that was like you felt like that was something like to do to take you to the next level or um i actually i i had been playing you know like i said like roughly since i was eight dad had shown me some stuff i had taken lessons um what was it george's music in springfield okay mm -hmm. um i, I took the... lessons there what's that i was gonna say for the record i hated that place Oh yeah. <laughs> um, hey, I had a couple of good teachers there. I won't. I won't talk about the store. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, I, I took lessons there, and like Dad showed me stuff and all that. And then I, I started going to School of Rock because they had the whole performance side. Um, right. uh, I, you know, because they did shows, and my cousin Tyler also went there. And at the time, okay. he was a lot better than me. Um, okay. So I kind of saw that as like, oh, like you know. I guess a little competitive me was like, oh, well, I want to go to school rock too. Um, but like, it was also, it was just like, it looked cool. So right. and it was, it was a great, great program, great experience. But uh, yeah. 
it, it, I'll tell you what, it, those school of rocks, if they were around in the eighties, my lord. Oh, I'm sure I'd probably they would have killed it. I probably would have known how to like really play guitar instead of you know <laughs> pow, power chords. <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so now you actually went to um, you went to what was it Valley Forge Military School? So I was I was like kind of surprised yeah. by that. Yeah, so was I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Now I the way I like to describe that was. Um, Growing up, I just thought I wanted to join the military. Like, it always just looked really cool and sounded really cool. And then I got there and then realized that my dumbass really just likes action movies. I just, <laughs> I was infatuated with, like, you know, to Stallone and uh, Schwarzenegger and, like, all those, like, crazy movies where it's all military and guns and explosions. And then, yeah, I got, like, a month. And the military school isn't even the real military. So I, I don't you know, even have a real grasp of it, but that sucked. So I didn't want to join. Um, <laughs> that, see, yeah, that, that's because like six when I, in and... Oh, okay. Cause usually like when I, like, I, I remember like kids that would get sent there. Usually they like, they were bad mm -hmm. kids and getting in trouble and their parents were sending them there to straighten their ass out. So I was like, Hmm, was Sebastian a, a troublemaker? Or? <laughs> no, I, I wanted to go there like an idiot. <laughs> now i got like I, I got like six months in and i was like mom no please can i please leave and Save me. regular high school and she was like no you're stuck there till college <laughs> oh wow so uh, well, you i mean she was, and, and she was you... like no you're it, it'll look good for college so like why don't you just stay there and i was like ah, wow okay all right well i mean it did me some good i guess i, I didn't say it can't say it hurt but yeah uh, right yeah, it was wow. interesting to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> now you did something that, you know, I remember seeing it on Facebook, you know, uh, in the Mach Twenty Two days, and I was like, "Wow, like this kid's got like a pretty smart head on his shoulders, and he's not just like, ah, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna like be a rock star like my father. Like you became a mechanic. You were like cranking wrenches and and doing the whole mechanic I mean thing for a while." Yeah, I caught the bug. I caught the bug bad. Um, like when I was doing Mach 22, like I had a bunch of friends who just kind of got me into cars. And Lamont, the singer as well, uh -huh. um, he, he's, I haven't talked to him in a while, but he's, he was a great friend to me through all those years. We hung out all the time. Um, but uh, yeah, he got me into cars kind of as well. And, you know, I just, that was like, all right, well, instead of like just learning from YouTube, I should just go to school. And I went to UTI right. like while Mach 22 was doing gigs and whatnot. And, and I'm uh, really happy I did that. I learned a lot. And I still like, you know, I, I see cars going down the road. And I'm like, oh, man, I know what that exhaust is. Or like, oh, look at that <laughs> suspension. You know, it's it's it's, it's crazy. It's, it's caught the bug. It's the only way to say it. <laughs> uh, that, you know, that's probably, beside a doctor, probably the most valuable profession there is. Because everybody always needs a mechanic, including yourself. Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. There's always always machines around that are broken. The only thing you got to do is you got to make sure that you, you're careful who you tell that you're a mechanic. Because then they're <laughs> going to have, like, like your neighbors, if you tell them you're a mechanic, they're like, oh, hey, my car's making this weird noise, like, every three days. And it's just like, oh, my God. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and it worked out, too, uh, you know, as you're on the road when the van breaks down. Oh, yeah. No, we... Uh, that definitely there was like the first i'd say there was two years there with, with tantric that the rv was just constantly falling apart and i had like all of my tools out with me like all my snap-on tools and stuff i had from school <laughs> like like uh, i was just oh it was brutal but we never missed a game that's yeah. awesome that's pretty awesome. The road so, so the years of mach 22 i mean you guys i mean you guys lit philly on fire i mean it was you know, without a doubt, number one band in the city for, you know, a nice, good five, six, seven year span. And um, you guys accomplished so much. Putting out, kill, um, getting some of the best gigs of a lifetime. Did you ever think you would end up actually leaving the band? Like, were you an original member of the band? No. So um, 
Mach 22 is originally, it's Le- Lamont's project. He had okay. uh, a couple different lineups. I think like two or three lineups before I had joined. Okay. Um, and it, it, when, when I joined the band, I was probably in for at least five years. Right. Um, and I had seen a couple lineup changes, but it was always kind of like, it was, it was a separate like unit. Like when we were, when we were on fire, it was just like, it was magic. I don't know. It was like, yeah. that just felt like, I don't know. just felt like the rock band I always wanted to be in. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, it sucks. It just, things didn't work out. We had a lot of opportunities that came up that, you know, unfortunately we kind of just passed by. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but yeah, I, I just saw that, uh, Lamont's got another lineup coming up. Right. Um, so I'm excited to see that cause he's got Matt Stanley or yeah, yeah Matt Stanley in it. Um, so he's, he's a pretty heavy hitter in the Delco scene. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> People can't escape Delco. It's always going to be there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I went to a freaking garage sale. Off topic, but this past Saturday, I go to a garage sale. First garage sale of the day I hit. First thing I see is an Eagles hat on the top of this guy's tail. I'm like, sweet. It's a brand new hat. And he goes, oh, you're from Philly? I said, yes, I am. He's like, are you from Upper Darby? I was like, are you freaking kidding me? How did you know that? <laughs> He's like, I can hear it in your voice. I'm like, how do you know Upper Darby? Uh, you you can kind of uh, you can kind of hear it. <laughs> That's funny, man. It's so crazy. Um, so it, mock, going back to the Mach 22 thing, when it was time for you to leave, I mean, Jaron had already jumped ship and was on the the tank, tantric boat. Um, when you had that opportunity, did you put a lot of thought into it? Was it something like you were ready to do? Um, it was just, uh, the big difference was it was an, it was an act that I was able to tour. And at that point I had never really tour. Right. Um, like, like Mach 22, like, like you said, we were on fire locally. The farthest mm-hmm. we ever got was we played Rocklahoma one year. Right. Um, and then I think we played Nashville. Um, but it's like, we really didn't get around much and we weren't really able to. So when Jaron mm-hmm. left and jo- and got the tantric gig, um, I, I understood. I was like, you know, it's, I get yeah. it. You want to tour, you want to do it. You want to like actually do it. I'm like, cool. Yeah. Um, and then it didn't work out with, uh, Johnny Monaco with Tantric mm-hmm. and then he offered it to me. So it's kind of like, it, it was a, a no brainer really. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't, I wanted to do both, but I just, I didn't think it would be possible. Yeah. So, and that's how we, we put it with the guys. It was like, Hey dude, you know, we love you as we love this band, but you know, this is a good opportunity. And you know, if you got to move on and get other people, then absolutely. I mean, sure. we just want the best for everybody and they want everybody to be, you know, be able to express themselves musically. Right. Yeah. Did you, did you um, talk to your dad about that move at all? Um, not really. No. I mean, I, I like I talked to him about it and was like, "Hey, like I got this." I, I, well, I think the way it was put first, it was like a an offer to do a couple weekends. So okay. it wasn't like, "Hey, you want to join this band?" It was like, "Hey, yeah. well, why don't you come out and do like a couple shows and let's see how it goes." So like right. I told him about it, and you know I worked my ass off trying to learn the songs, and you know like I I would always call him any about anything musically or anything like sure. got new gear or you know. Yeah, I just call him anything, really. Right. So, of course, you know, I talked to him about it. What when, when it came time for for calls like that, or even as you were starting to come up in the music business, or even going back to your like very young days, was your dad like? I just picture being the protective dad. Like, are you sure you want to go down this route? Are you sure you want to get involved in this crazy business? <laughs> uh, you know, when you started like. Take things serious, or or was it like fucking do it? Uh, it, so my did his mom Delco was, come out? <laughs> it, no, no. So my dad was very supportive. At first, he didn't think I was going to go this route because of like he saw me growing up and you know like wanting to be all GI Joe, and he's like, ah, this guy, <laughs> like, and he saw me and he's like, what the military school? Who the fuck chooses that? Um, so like my dad didn't think of think I was going that 
out until like after high school and i actually started right. to like play music but my mom was always just like no you can't cut your hair no you're not allowed to play guitar like you know she was just do not be <laughs> like your father like <laughs> But now she said I've actually made a job out of it. She's very supportive. That's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. So now doing the the tantric thing, and we and we talked about this before we went live. Um, and I said, I'm like, you guys are freaking road dogs, man. You guys are out there grinding it like nonstop. Like I was actually surprised like you got a little break right now and you're home for a little bit. Oh yeah. Feels nice to like sleep in my own bed. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe is it it's been is it five years already you you guys been with them I'm pretty sure yeah Jaron I think is about uh I think he's like six months uh my senior I guess uh in right. the band uh but yeah I think it's been about five years it's crazy it's been that long ah, I, I saw that and I was like holy shit where is the freaking time going ah, I know I know and it uh, the one thing that has helped it go by so fast is the fact that we tour so much and it's right. constantly a different show or a different place, a different day, another show, you know, right. it just like, it doesn't stop like this right now, this couple of days that I'm home, I, I won't, this is the last break I'll get for like the next month. Pretty much. Wow. Like we're, we're hitting it solid, which is awesome. I mean, it's good. It's good to be busy. Sure. It's good to be playing shows and, you know, spread the good word of tantric. <laughs> <laughs> now, road life is—is is it what you expected? Did Did Jaron give you like the details before you started really getting uh, into it? Or I don't think no. Jaron kind of just was like, "Hey, do you want this opportunity?" And I was like, "Fuck yeah!" Um, and he's been a good friend along the way. But you know, there was there was a lot of figuring things out on just how to how to be how to you know persevere sure. you know uh just how to get through day-to-day -day shit really you know and you spend yeah. like 23 hours of the day working for that one hour to actually be on stage and you know play music so it's it, it was there was a lot i didn't expect and there's a lot i had to adapt to but i mean sure. uh, hey it, you know i could be swinging a hammer so <laughs> it's true it's very true yeah. You could be uh you could be out uh you know playing GI Joe somewhere too. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, man. So so now in, in the tantric world, like how involved you guys since you guys have been aboard, you guys put out two albums with Hugo. Um how involved are you guys in the whole like writing process or is it all Hugo and you guys um just come in and do your parts or um well so for the first record um, that was like almost done when we became a part of the project and like had to okay. get a get a record cranked out. Um, okay. So we recorded. Um, oh wait, actually. Oh, I completely forgot about that one song. Oh yeah, I sang vocals on one song. So we recorded the uh, uh, the instruments, and then uh, I did vocals on "Wannabe," and yeah, so mo all of the writing was pretty much already done. We just had to kind of like add our flavor or, our, you know, our, our style to it. Um, for uh, the sum of all things, that was more of like from the ground up. So like everyone right. kind of brought riffs or song ideas to the table. Um, okay. I'm not much of a, a lyricist or good with like vocal melodies. Mm -hmm. uh, great for great with harmonizing. If somebody has something already, I could figure something out. But um, so I just primarily like piece together like three or four parts for a song and then bring it to okay. the table. Usually Jaron helps me arrange it a little bit. Um, and then Hugo throws his, uh, his touch on it, which he has a very, he, he's a, he's wonderful at writing music. He's the, fantastic at it, but he's a very interesting approach to it. But his mind moves so quick that, you know, wow. it's, it's tough for, for me to keep up with it. So that's why I'm like here, do your mind. <laughs> well, you you answered uh, a question of mine that I was I was going to ask too. Uh, that um, was awesome. That was uh, when 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 uh, Mercury Retrograde came out. My favorite song on the album was "Wanna Be," and I was like, "All right, who who's on who's singing that track?" 
And actually, a few people sent me messages when I announced this interview, and they said, you got to ask Sebastian when he's going to put his own music out because he's a badass singer, too, and he's got a great voice. So then I was like, wow, is that him freaking singing on one of me? And you just answered it for me. Yeah, that uh, every time we play play with uh, Paralandra, um, they they always request us to play Wannabe. We just did it this last show, um, but uh, but yeah, it's that was that was the first time I actually had ever sang. I never really sang at all really? before, really, in previous bands like Mach Mach Twenty Two. I didn't know how to sing. I just would scream into a mic, and if it sounded good, it sounded good. If it didn't, whatever. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, part of the gig when when Jaron offered it to me, uh, he was like, dude, well, the guy that, that you're technically like replacing uh, sings a lot of harmonies. And like, so you kind of got to fill those shoes. And mm. I think I managed to get like three vocal lessons in before okay. I had the first couple of shows. And then the rest of it was just trial and error. And right. <laughs> Hugo helped me a lot. Um, just with like basic things, like I just, I, I was very green. Um, and mm -hmm, especially sure. now being, you know, five years into the band, I'm a much more confident singer than I was, but I, I don't know. I think I have a lot of stuff like music written that doesn't necessarily fit tantric, um, sure. like has more of that Mach 22 vibe. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I, a lot of people have asked me about my own music. I'll, I'll do it eventually. I just, I, I have a hard time thinking lyrics are like worthy so I'm just like, ah, I know that line's stupid. And just like, can never agree on anything. So I don't know. One of these days I'll just muscle through it and get something out. Just, just go by like, uh, like a friend of mine said to me, you know, years ago, back in the nineties, Kurt Cobain has some of the stupidest lyrics ever. And he's considered a God. So. Hmm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, you know, just make it work from the heart and it'll all be good. All right, give that a shot. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now you were saying uh, you guys are getting back out, out there, you know, pretty busy the next month. I guess the rest of the year is pretty filled up for you guys as well, right? Yeah, yeah, we're we got dates until I think December. Yeah. Wow. That's so. It's it's like when I see you guys out there every day, and I see the pictures posted, and I just like shake my head. I'm like, I don't, I don't know how they do it. Like it, it's truly watching you guys. It's like, that's freaking serious and hardcore, man. Yeah. I mean, we just really like, like what we're doing, you know, we just want to keep playing and you know, there's no point in stopping really and just take all the gigs you can. And right now it's peak season. So, you know, right. crush this month and then just hopefully we can just build on this for next year. And then we're planning uh, early next year um, to, we're going to hopefully sit down for like a month, like take some time off and really okay. like focus on writing new music and do a new record. So, you know, fingers crossed, we got some plans. So we, we definitely want to, you know, get another one out there. So you guys are, you guys like writing on the bus at all, or, or you don't, you, like you say, you're going to wait until you're off the road and get into it. Um, right now, like on the road, it's it's kind of way too hectic for us to like be. Sure. We don't have, you know, we just our bus just broke down in South Dakota, um, <laughs> so we don't have a bus. And, and okay. before that, we we didn't have anything, so we were in. We went from an RV that we crashed to minivans, like rental vans, and then we got this bus, and then that immediately broke down. Um, so oh, now geez. we have a RV that Hugo has that we're using for this month, um, but. Uh, We've been just driving, you know, in, sometimes in multiple vehicles. So there's there hasn't been a second to try and ride on the road. So uh, so that's what we're saying. Like hopefully, like January when it's going to be slow anyway, because usually not a lot of people right. book during January and February. So we'll just take some time off then, and you know, really just relax and hang out, and you know, explore whatever we're feeling, you know, or song ideas or whatever. Do, do you like when you go through like like that's the the true hard parts of the job. Is there any moment like, you know, people have a, j a job and they get like, oh, man, not again. Like, what the hell am I doing here? Do you do you have those moments when the bus breaks down? Like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> In the middle yeah, of South I Dakota. Used <laughs> I, I, I used to when I had to fix it. <laughs> Anymore, I'm not, I, can't, I'm, I can't be responsible for like a Prevo 
or something, which is what we had. So like, that was like, I told him, I was like, this thing breaks down. You got to call somebody. I can't help you. I'm sorry. Um, but now I've right. like any moments, I mean, really it's just as long as the set goes well, that, that makes the day for me. You know, if we start having like, like stupid issues, then I start getting a little aggravated, like cables are cutting out right. or like, you know, the house sound sucks mm. or whatever, but you know, you just try and make the best out of it really. And, you know, at, at the end of the day, you're, you got to put on a good show. It is, a, it's just kind of your job. So, you yeah. know, people want to see you perform well. So, you know, do your best. Didn't you fill in for saliva for like one or two shows or something too? Like last second, like a couple years ago? I did. Yes. Um, I think I did two or three three shows over like uh, a, a couple i for, there was a couple times where i jumped in for him um but yeah the first time uh wayne had some medical issues or something and and couldn't make okay. his flight so it there was nobody really else on the tour that I, I don't even know if they asked anybody else on the tour but they asked me and i was like okay yeah i don't know these songs but i'll try um, <laughs> that's what i was gonna say like that's where, like, you hear this stuff more and more in, in the modern day of music. And a situation like that, like, I mean, was it like a last-minute thing? Like, oh, le learn these 10 songs today was, and get up on stage tonight? I, for, I forget what time they texted me, but I wanted to say, let's just say 2 o'clock. They texted me and oh, said, hey, shit. can you fill in for Wayne tonight? <laughs> get the fuck out of uh, here. And their set was at, like... Let's say eight thirty. So yeah, it was like, oh, and they yeah. did a thirty-five, I think, because yeah, they we did a thirty-five because uh, they did a drum solo to buy time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, it, it was last God. minute, so I don't even blame them. It was like they were like, "Can you just please help us fulfill our contract? Like, just learn these songs." And I remember. Oh, right. man, dope ride fell apart at the end. I messed it all up. But either way, the, <laughs> I got it the second night. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's so crazy, man. I, dude, I like I, I played in a band for 16 years. I, I, I played the same song wrong for 16 years. Like, <laughs> I couldn't get it right. Like, holy shit, that's amazing, man. That's freaking amazing. Yeah. So I mean, now when you get an opportunity like that, you just gotta take it. Yeah. Right. So, so one thing you've done, I, I you know, uh, sadly, your, your father passed away. It was just uh, the year anniversary uh, last week, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Um. But you've been very, um, very adamant and uh, keeping his his legacy alive. Um, and you're sharing things with the fans through Patreon, um, recordings, pictures, uh, video, etc. Um, what is is the? Can you explain just the, something that you want to have his legacy say? Ooh. Um, wow, that's a good way to put it. I mean, I guess I really just want to uh, just share his memory and share all of the things, all the wonderful stuff that I saw about him and just like his music and everything, and just share it with everybody. You right. know, and like I, when I was clearing out his apartment, um, we found like cassettes and, and, reels like old masters like tape mm -hmm. um of just like stuff i had never heard like there was a wow. song called for the love of sebastian that like i was like oh my god not to you know stab sure. me, please you know geez yeah it, it struck me hard um but uh it, they, he he had like he had a solo record and that was i would say okay yeah those were like his hits you know out of his yeah. personal catalog but there was so much more and there's there's stuff that if you listen to the music, or at least for me, I can mm -hmm. hear different parts of his life. Yeah. Like I can hear like his, like there's a song called fly with me um, okay. that he wrote when he was, I mean, in early twenties, like before Cinderella. And my aunt actually did like a baton routine when she was in middle school to it. Like, you know, so <laughs> I, I shared, I shared it with the family. And my aunt like started crying. She's like, "Oh my god, I haven't heard this wow. in like twenty five years." But you know, and it's it's great music. And mm -hmm. as far as I had known, uh, my father like playing wise, it was all very 
Cinderella-esque. Sure. Um, and like, that was most of what I knew from him. And like, you know, the most of the lessons that he had taught me were like based in the blues and things like that. Right. Um, but as I was listening to all this music, I started like hearing different parts of his influence that he'd always told me about, but he didn't play like that anymore. Like mm. that, the, the, the song I'm referring to fly with me is this crazy prog song that's awesome. And then he's got really? these beautiful instrumental acoustic pieces where he just like wrote harmonies over them. And, you know, wow. he's got like some funk stuff, um, huh. like very cool strat playing stuff. And like, it's just, I, I'm not in it to like, you know, I don't really want to make money off of this. I would just want to share, sure. it. you know, I want yeah. people to hear it. Um, and that's why like uh, with the Patreon, it's giving me a, a platform to send all these reels in and kind of piece it all together and and kind of re-record anything i have to um initially uh I, I only sent a couple of reels in so i have just a couple tracks that are ready to go but i'm, I'm just about ready to just send the rest of them in right now right because um, it, it was explained to me to be this really complicated long process and hmm. it didn't wind up being that way um, wow that's so cool. i'm i'm hoping soon i can have i'm just getting a song list together now and then uh, I'd probably a couple more couple more tracks from the from the reels and i should have at least something to go ready to you know put on a cd that'd be cool so, yeah how, how about doing something is there something like uh you know like uh lisa marie presley did a duet with her father is there anything like that that you'd be able to do like maybe like a something that your dad sang vocals on and you sing some too or uh, that I actually did have that idea. So he has another song where he covered, uh, called you're so vain. It's the, okay. Uh, um, Carly Simon. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That mm -hmm. song. Um, and I have all the masters for that. So I was thinking wow. about trying, like maybe I'd do a verse, he'd do a verse or something. Right. And, uh, at the end of that song, it's really funny. Cause it's, it, 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 there's a version of it that I had, um, that it just fades out but I have the master. Mm. So this is the track without the fade out. And at the end, right. he like does this big harmony build up, And then you could hear him saying, and I'm like, see ya. And like, I just, mm. it, it hit me when I just started cracking up laughing because in my head, I hear my dad's voice like, see ya. And he used to say that shit <laughs> all the time, you know, like, you know, just like, Oh my God, this is hysterical. So it's like, just a little snippet in there that made it personal. But yeah, I would love to, to make it very much like kind of a, you know, a father son music thing. Cause sure. before he passed, that's what it was supposed to be. It, it wasn't this material. Um, right. We had songs we were working on that was, we were going to write a record together because, you know, he, wow. he had uh, a three record deal with Rat Pack. So, okay. but he just never, they just never really pushed it. So he's like, eh, you know, I'll do it one day. Mm. Right. You know, but so I figured, hey, why don't we do one together? So, but I'm glad we're, you know, I'm getting to share some of his music. That's cool. That's awesome. You know. I'll tell you what, when I moved to Nashville, I was like, all right, like hopefully I could uh maybe somehow call Jeff and say, Hey Jeff, can I come over and talk uh music? <laughs> you know what I mean? And he could say, Who the fuck are you? <laughs> yeah, um, probably. <laughs> 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 I'd be like, yeah, yeah, you know, two upper derby boys back in the fucking fold in Nashville. <laughs> yeah. um, but the funny thing was, uh last year. During the the, the the COVID times, uh, my fiance and I, she, uh, she had to take her to the emergency room. I'm sitting in the emergency room, and um, across from me, I kept, like, I'm looking. There's, like, this I, – I couldn't – I'm like, is it a guy? Is it a girl? Like, real tall and lanky, but had, like – you know, had the mask on, but long, straggly hair, and was wearing Uggs, Ugg boots, and real baggy clothes, but had, like, all this, like, jewelry and – I'm like – what it's what you know, what's going on over there like is it a guy or a girl and yeah. then fi finally i i'm listening to him talk and i'm like oh fuck that's tom kiefer <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like oh shit so i'm like like oh like i, I want to uh... scream out it's fucking tom kiefer and i was wearing like <laughs> some some type of delco shirt and i was like I, I know, and I've like stood up and turned my back so he can see the Delco thing on the back. And, th and then I kept doing that, and I sat down, and then he was looking at me like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, he probably was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
It's like, oh, well, this guy knows who I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I didn't say it. I didn't want to. It's not the time or place. But, yeah, it's crazy. Um, so the the one thing, though, that you and uh, – how did your, like, dad get all involved with the world of becoming a chef? Like, that kind of took me by surprise. Um, so really it all started when uh, – so we did our solo record – or I say I, our solo record. We did his solo record um, in, uh, I think, like 2013. And that's when, like, okay. Cinderella was kind of pretty much done. Tom was doing yeah. his solo stuff. It was going well. Um, so Dad did his solo stuff. And he mm-hmm. pretty much was, like, kind of didn't want to do it at a club level anymore. Sure. You know, because really he, he's, like, back to the level where, like, Tantric is. You know, it's like we're just yeah. – some. well, not, I wouldn't say – I shouldn't say that because uh, – Sometimes we get really sick gigs, but sometimes we're sitting in a bar from 1 p.m. till 2 a.m., you know, and that's yeah. those were the kind of nights that really got to him. Um, mm-hmm. So he was just like, you know what? I'm good. I had 25 years of the highest highs and the coolest yeah. career. I lived the lives of 10 men. Uh, I'm good. So he just over like probably which like, takes balls. Two- yeah, that takes absolutely. Balls. Yeah. And a lot of people didn't want to accept that, like me, mm-hmm. for one. Um, <laughs> you know, but uh, now he, he over those like I'd say from like the early two thousands on, he had just developed kind of just a hobby, like a passion for cooking. Mm-hmm. Um, and f- when he just made that call, he was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna go back for back to school for culinary. Um, wow. And he did. He just started working in restaurants and. That led to, you know, one thing led to another, and he, he met Chef Iron Mike, um, and they started, he started mentoring my dad a little bit, um, and they became really good friends, and uh, he's like, in a, he's not Delco, he's like honorary Delco, because he's from New York, so it's like the same attitude, he's like <laughs> somewhere else. Um, right. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, yeah, he, he's awesome, but he, uh, and that's when they got their idea for the, for the hot sauce. Um, but it it originally started out as a uh, a barbecue, which sauce. I'm gonna yeah, say, there you go. yeah, <laughs> yo, this shit is for real. It's freaking amazing, and it's good, right? I, I'm, dude, I'll shit you not. I was fucking drinking it. It's so <laughs> fucking good. It really is. I, I was putting it on eggs and chicken, and I oh, it's yeah. delicious fucking hot sauce. It really is. And it's really that that everyone's like, oh, afraid of it because it's it's hot sauce. It's really not hot. It's really not no, hot. It has no. a little heat, but that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly just good flavor. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. At, you know, going back to, to him when he was uh, becoming a chef and doing the chef thing, the one thing that I noticed, because he was always like posting stuff on uh, Instagram and all about it, he truly seemed happy with what he was doing. Oh, yeah. No, he did. He loved it. Yeah. 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 I think he, I think he liked the chaos a little bit of a kitchen, I guess. Sure. Um, but no, he, he, he loved cooking and every time the band would roll through town, he'd make us wings or he'd like bring open, bring home something from the restaurant or, you know, he just loved cooking, love entertaining. He'd be running around. Like he like looked like his mom, my, my Japanese grandma, <laughs> when he would serve yep. us and stuff. He'd be like, oh, like, do you want something? Oh, we'd like scurry back to the kitchen and grab something. That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, he's awesome. That's awesome. So I the the, the question I got to ask now because it was actually asked it was in an interview I guess last week or two weeks ago to Fred Corey, you know if they would ever do you know maybe a tribute show to your dad or a reunion of any type, what would your response be if they asked you? Uh, it, everyone who's asked me this, I gave them the same answer. If they asked, I would absolutely do it. Um, I, I, that would be my childhood dream come true, you know, but sure. at the same time, I don't think that's ever going to be asked. Yeah. Um, because it, it's, I know how dad thought, I know how all those guys think, um, mm-hmm. they're, you know, in our minds, I guess I should say it's like Zeppelin, you know, it's yeah. just like, you got what you got. It was fucking yeah. awesome. Right. You know what I mean? And it's, yeah. it's really, it's memories to be had. And, you know, it's, it, it I don't know. I, I think it's, it would tarnish, I guess, what 
what happened really because i think the way fred put it was like it was like stage right died on the same day you know yeah. uh, you know my dad and gary passed on the same day i just yeah that's the that's another crazy thing that happened that you know right I can't even fathom um but then it's just like yeah if i fill in like i can do the job but i'm not my dad you know yeah. i look like him i play like him you know but i don't know it's just if you in my eyes it's like you want to hear cinderella songs go see Kiefer. you know it's there you go pretty much just as good yeah you know he's got a killer band they're on a killer mm -hmm. tour right now mm -hmm. um it's you know kill or higby's killing it he even got yeah. the the jeff labar seal of approval so <laughs> there you go <laughs> dude this was um this is this is freaking awesome talking to you. I'm glad I'm glad we got to do this. I'm glad we got to throw some of this stuff out there for everybody, and you know, a lot of uh, a lot of people want to. I don't feel you, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go out there and say this. I don't feel you get to do this enough. You need to be doing this more. People gotta you know talk to you more and get you out there and. Yeah, let, absolutely. Let, I'm let, always down for let's a good learn chat. about <laughs> let's learn about Sebastian. It's it's your turn now. You know. Let's let's learn what makes Sebastian tick. Like, all right. Besides your dad, push your dad aside now. He's just the hot sauce king, Chef Jeff Labar. He's not a guitar player. Who's your favorite guitar player? Who's your number one inspiration? Uh, if I had to pick one, one. Oh man, see, you like, better say I the right answer. Better say the right answer. I struggle because it changed over the years, but right now it would probably be George Lynch. I can't argue with you on that one it was the wrong answer but i can't argue because he's my second favorite i'm i'm really hard up between george and warren d martini because i warren, warren was my favorite. i i i strive to play more like uh like george but i wind up sounding more like warren so i don't know just like not a, a bad thing no, absolutely. I, but I, I, those guys are just, you know, the gods for me. But I love also like yeah. John Sykes. He's another big one. Yeah. You know, that's cool. So. All right. All right. Well, number one is Randy Rhodes. Learn this. Randy Rhodes. Ah, oh, yeah. He's th well, that's what I was saying. I <laughs> <laughs> and then it's George Lynch. Don since him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, Randy is king. You know, well, this. See, all right, all right. To put it straight, it's like I started off first. It was Angus Young, you know, just that SG got me, and then it was Tony Iommi, Jakey e. Lee, Randy Rhodes, Zach Wild, John Sykes, and then it just went. It yeah, yeah. It's just I don't think you know? Jake gets enough <laughs> credit from people. J Jake deserves no, more credit not at all. for sure. No, actually, it's it's funny because the label uh, when they. Like told, I guess Tom and Eric it was like, we need a, a more Jakey e. Lee style guitar player. When they had fired, mm. uh, um, what was it, Michael Kelly Smith and, and Tony yeah, Castro? Yeah. Um, and the, the dad happened to be half Japanese, so I guess that worked mm. out. Um, <laughs> well, it was between him and Reggie Wu, so there you go. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's that's funny. That's uh, I, I didn't know that part of it of the story. Yeah, that, that that's straight from you know dad's mouth. He's like, that's what the label said. Wow. Yeah. Crazy, crazy business that you yeah, got involved man. in, my friend. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure it's only going to get worse too. <laughs> Are you on TikTok? Yeah, I mean, because you know, I I hear that complaint from most rockers that I talk to that they're they're being forced by their management or PR to get on TikTok. I. Uh, I am not. I probably should be. I'm terrible with social media. I'm re I'm trying really hard to be good at it, but I'm just I don't have the attention span. I don't think. But you know, I, I pro there's this kid who uh, uh, there's this band Dropout Kings that the they're they're I'm a fan of them. The drummer is literally every day puts like he's getting like millions of hits on his TikToks that he's sharing every day, and he's like wow. TikTok famous and all this. But I don't even get it. Like how? What, what does TikTok famous mean? Like, what? Is, are you just known? Like, does that does that help you? I, I don't know. Hate TikTok. I hate it. I can't stand it. I I had it for like because we have a couple side things that we have TikTok for, and my and my girlfriend runs it. 
I had it on my phone, I think for like two weeks and I would go on there and I was, I was seeing these people and I said, I, I can't let these people in my life. I can't do it because they annoyed the hell out of me. I had to leave. It. <laughs> I feel like it's like, it would, it's entertaining to watch if you find the right stuff, but like, I don't, I, I can't sit there and like make TikToks all day long or like yeah. sit there and do dances outside or something. Like, I'm yeah, I, I, I don't need to, <laughs> yeah, I don't need to sit and watch people do dances or lip sync <laughs> or, or mime, uh, like stuff from a movie or stupid. I, I, why, why are these people getting famous and getting millions of hits? I don't understand. I, I, I don't know, but I guess that's just the way the world is, and us old men have to change. <laughs> Songs like Wannabe should be getting millions of hits, not these I, imbeciles on TikTok. Well, you know, I'm a little biased. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you have every right to be. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, so where's the best place everybody should go to follow you? I guess would be would it be Instagram or Instagram? I'm not... Yeah, Instagram, Bats5000, uh, Sebastian Labar, Facebook, um, Patreon, or Patreon.com slash Sebastian Labar. Um, yeah, OfficialTantric.com, uh, official tantric, or at OfficialTantric Instagram. That's all the van stuff. Um, yeah, I do occasional live streams and post periodically. If you message me and whatever else, I will respond. JeffLabar.com, ChefIronMike.com to get the hot sauce. Get um, it. I it's think, well worth every penny. Yeah, feel the burn. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the websites I can think of. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. Well, Sebastian, dude, thank you so much for doing this. Have fun out there uh, on the road once you get back out there, but enjoy your time at home. Rest, yeah. relax, man. Put the fucking guitar down for a few minutes. Oh, I can't do that. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Thank <laughs> you for having me on. Appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, absolutely, dude. H h hang on for one second, but I'm going to say, like, everybody, we're going to say goodbye, and uh, I'm going to talk to Sebastian real quick. Peace out, everybody. Until next time. Actually, hey, tomorrow night, Ray West from from uh, Spread Eagle. Tomorrow night, same time. Oh, 